will consist of five problems and a calculator. So one of the problems has a part A, B, C, so it's really three problems, you know. So really, truly, there's like seven problems, you know. But one through five will be given on day one. No calculator. Day two, which will be Wednesday, will review. Thursday will be day two of the test. Consists of six problems and two bonus questions. You will be permitted to use a calculator on that. And when we go through the review, I'll tell you which two problems that you actually will need it on. But on um, when I pass the test out that day, I'll also tell you the two problems. You can circle up with a calculator next to it. The other's calculator simply just won't do what you need it for here. Okay. All right, so this is period seven's review. So what I did is, it's because I knew I wasn't going to be here, you know, the day that this was given to you, is I decided to go ahead and break it into which ones to do so that I would have four separate reviews that could be videotaped, okay? Um, and so for you guys, you have this one down here. And part A of this one says, is F continuous at X equals 10? Okay. So what I need to do is that means from the left side, it has to get to the same number as from the right side. And this part here is from the left side, and this part here is from the right side of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find f of 10 using the first one, which is, oops, I want an equal sign there. The square root of 60 minus 24, which is the square root of 36, which is 6. And then I want f of 10 using the second one, which is um, 20 minus 14, which is 6. So if the numbers are the same, then yes, this is continuous. So your class happened to be the only one with it continuous today. The other three, they were all not continuous. So, you know, I tried to do in the review all the different kinds, you know, so that all the classes covered them, uh, but I don't know how much you guys actually go in and watch the videos, so I don't know. Do you? You watch all four? What I usually do is I just like go through each problem and then watch the video, mm -hmm. make sure I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. If I don't, then I'll just watch another video. Right. That's good. Like you should ahead of time, you know, like tonight for homework, just plan on doing period ones and then watch period ones video and make sure you got them all right. Like that would be the perfect way to review for this. All right, then the other thing, if you could on your paper just add an equal sign underneath any of these right here, because it includes 15, and so I should have had it equal to 15. Um, so anyways, it's asking you for part B to find the average rate of change. And so part B, I want to know, do you know that that means slope? Okay, so I take the two X values that they give me, and I plug them in to their appropriate places. So 4 happens to fall in this category right here. So it would be the square root of 24 minus 24, which is the square root of 0 or 0. And then the 15, which falls into this part over here, 2 times 15 is 30. And 30 minus 14 is 16. After I find my two points, I then just simply find slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is 16 over 11, and that is my answer. If that does reduce, you should reduce it. I think period one's reduced, but the rest of them did not. So, however, just me. So what do you think? Can you handle the first one? Can you with that? All right, so number two, you don't have. But, do you have to copy all of these down? No. Just copy this period, because if you want to do the others, they're on the um, uh, Polaris site. You can just pull open the notes and you can see any of them. All right, so for you guys, it is this one here. This says the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals 5, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals 5. And then this one here has the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side, is negative infinity, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side is also negative infinity. And the question for this is to sketch the graph that has these limits. So 
So the first two that I see right here are referring to a Y value of five, meaning it is a horizontal asymptote at five. And both the left side and the right side of the graph are approaching five. But what I don't know is, is it approaching it from this side or is it approaching it from this side? Same on this side, this side, or this side. You know, how is it approaching it? And that's where you could kind of lightly with your pencil sketch that, but then you're going to have to erase two of those. And so then we get to this one and it says the limit as x approaches 2. Well, here's where x is 2. So there's a vertical asymptote there. It's saying from the left side it's approaching negative infinity. So it's going down. And on the right side, it's approaching negative infinity. So it's going down. So that means this here is going to connect to this. And this here is going to connect to this. That means these are above it can get erased. So it will be a, you know, a rather simple sketch for you guys. Um, I think the one on the take home quiz was more difficult. And I will pass your take home quizzes back today so that you can see anything that you might have missed on there. Okay, so you're basically just building a graph, certain stipulations. All right, so that is number two. Now, question number three has three parts to it. Pick, do you want number four, five, or six here? Pick one of them. Five. And we're going to do number 14 because the other classes did 11, 12, 13, 14. And then we're going to do number 16 just because it's at the bottom of the screen. It's easier for me to write below it. But the other classes, two of them did 15, so we'll do 16. All right, so here we go with the first one. This says the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. I try to plug the negative 3 in. And I get 9 minus 6 minus 3, and I get a denominator of 0. That's a problem, okay? I can't divide by 0. So what that means is I should probably factor. So I have the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x minus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x minus 1, and reduce. And by reducing, what I'm doing is saying, okay, there's a hole in the graph at negative 3, but usually when there's a hole from both sides, it still is approaching the same value. So at this point, I now have the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x minus 3 over x minus 1. And I now can plug the negative 3 in. I've gotten rid of the problem. So when I plug it in, I get negative 6 over negative 7, or that's not negative 7, negative 4 which is positive 3 halves or 1.5. So that's the work. I think these here are worth like 6 points. You know, so I'm looking for things I'm looking for. I'm looking for, did you factor it? Did you reduce it? Did you keep the limit until you plugged the negative 3 in? You know, but it's the same thing on the quiz that you're going to get back that you took. You know, if you're missing that, you would have gotten points marked off, so you would know, you know, to correct that in your thinking before tomorrow. All right, next, question number 14. This one's probably a little bit harder here. Let me, uh, um, just kind of move these out of my way to give me some space over here, okay, because we don't need that problem anyway. All right, for this one right here, I look at this and I say, okay, it's approaching negative infinity. So I can't, like, plug in fin and negative infinity into these, per se. And these are the problems that we said, okay, let's divide every term by the highest exponent in the denominator. So in other words, this 2x is going to be 2x over x. That 6 is going to be minus 6 over x. But when I'm under a square root, I can't divide each one by x. I have to divide by what? x squared, because under the under there, that when you take square root of x squared, it's x then, okay? So I have the square root of x squared over x squared minus 9 over x squared, okay? So that's step one. Step two is to then simplify these things. 
This is the square root of 1 minus 9 over x squared, and then 2 minus 6 over x. And our goal is to try to get these numbers to appear, like that 1 and that 2 to appear. And the 9 over x squared, the 6 over x, now when I say what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this, those all approach 0. Okay, anything that's a number over an x, an x squared, x cubed, anything like that, those approach 0. So now as I plug this in, I have the square root of 1 minus 0 over 2 minus 0. Which is the square root of 1 over 2, which is my count. So again, each one of these is a little bit different. Number 13 is very similar to that one right there. It's just the right sign, but it's a still the same exact word. This one here, I had to multiply by a conjugate, and then I did have to factor and get something to cancel. This one here, I had to factor to get something to cancel. You know, so each one was just a tiny bit different there. So again, you will have access to all of those once I get them uploaded next period. Okay. All right, and then question number 16. Takes and asks these four questions right here. This is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side. This is from the left side. This is, um, it looks like 7 from the right side and 7 from the left side. So this piecewise function that's given, it's three pieces. These two share information with the 2, and these two share information with the 7. So this is the left side, and this is the right side. So when this says 2 from the right side, I'm going to plug 2 into this. The square root of 2 plus 2 is the square root of 4, which happens to be 2. And then we have 2 from the left side. So that's talking about this one right here, because like anything less than 2 is the left of 2, right? And so 2 from the left side, 6 times 2 is 12. <coughs> then we have 7 from the right side. That's this last one here. So 7 minus 4 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. And then 7 from the left side, 7 plus 2 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So this is, do you know how to read limit notation? That's really what I'm asking on that problem. Okay, so questions on those three. Anything there? Next, question four, the epsilon delta definition. I'm asking you the same exact kind of problem. It's the same kind that was on your take-home quiz as well. I know we did some that were linear like these, some that were parabolas that we had to then figure out what C was. I'm not giving you what with that. I'm giving you a basic question like this right here. Okay. Now on the take-home quiz, in the very first step, I need to make sure that I list, let epsilon be greater than zero and delta be greater than zero. That's two things you're telling me when you list that. So on this question, on the take home quiz, if you didn't have that line, you got two points marked off. Okay, and there were some people that left that off. Then we, um, you guys are this one, so we're going to go to this. We say if... The absolute value of x minus negative 7 is less than delta. You could also have is greater than 0 here if you want, but you don't have to have that. So in other words, this is x plus 7 is less than delta. Then, and then we take this part over here. Absolute value of 2x minus 3 minus negative 17 is less than epsilon. And then we work on that right side. Minus negative is plus positive. So we have 2x minus 3 plus 17 is the same thing as plus 14 right there. And I'm trying to kind of move this around until I get it to look like this x plus 7. So right here it looks like they're both divisible by 2. So I pull the 2 out and then divide both sides by 2. So for this one, I now have it the same as this. 
That means my delta equals epsilon over 2. Now, on the take-home quiz, this had a negative 5 that got factored out. But that means it's absolute value of negative 5, though. So you had to change it to a positive 5. So that was another place that I know I marked off on some papers. You guys, again, you'll see that in just a little bit when I pass those back. Could be epsilon over 5, then, for the delta? For the other one, yeah. For yeah. the take-home quiz, yeah, epsilon over 5. Okay. All right, now, here's the other thing that I marked off a few points. Some of you went back to this and brought it down here. You need the very first line brought down. Okay, so you got to point off if you didn't start at the first line. And then you say, oh, well, this is the same thing as 2x plus 14. And this is the same thing as 2 times the absolute value of x plus 7. Well, x plus 7 is less than delta. So then we say is less than 2 times delta. In place of this, I'm putting delta. And then what is delta? Well, delta is epsilon over 2. So then I'm replacing that. Boop, boop, beep, doop, and we get our E. So all of you, when you were doing it, like you knew you had to get the E, you know, or epsilon, but some of you didn't start at the right point kind of thing. And that's the second part. I think that one, how many points was that one worth? Do you guys remember? Was it 10? Yeah, I think it was 10. That's right. I mean, that first line alone is two of it, you know? I think this last part was three. And I think this part was five. Just how many, like I have it on my paper exactly how many points each part's worth when I grade. <coughs> so that was my least favorite section to teach because it is so, like, analytical. Um, but I think you can, all are able to, like, memorize that proof, you know. Now the question becomes, in December, are you going to be able to spit it out again on the final exam, you know. But we'll review for it, so. It's one of those things. You don't use it, you lose it, you know, without a doubt. All right. Last question for today is question number five. Choose a problem. Well, you guys had this one down here. X squared plus 5X plus 6. And it says, can you find the slope of f of x at x equals 3? Now let me tell you, you have two options. You can either have your points with your x values being 3 and 3 plus h, or you can have them being x and x plus h. If you use the 3 and the 3 plus h here, then down here you have to redo it with the x and x plus h. So it is in your best interest to use the x and x plus h up here because then you can use your answer from it in part d and not have to do that definition of limit twice or definition of derivative sorry twice so i would suggest doing it this way but it's you're not wrong if you don't okay so to plug the x in bless you you get x squared plus 5x plus 6. when you plug the x plus h in you get x plus h squared plus 5 times x plus h plus 6. And so then we have the limit as h approaches 0 of y2, which is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distribute the 5 plus 5x plus 5h plus 6. And then we have to subtract y2. So minus x squared minus 5x minus 6 all over h. So here I have this x squared and this negative x squared that cancel. This 5x and negative 5x, the 6 and the negative 6x. Or sorry, the 6 and negative 6. And everything I'm left with in that numerator has an h. So I factor it out. See you later, dude. Now plug a zero in for your h. So 2x plus 5 is your slope, is your f prime of x, whatever you want to call it. But this question says find the slope at x equals 3. So f prime of 3 is 6 plus 5, which is 11. 
That is the answer to part A. Part B, what is the equation of the tangent line to the curve at x equals 3? Well, I know my slope is 11. And I know the point has a 3 for the x value, but I don't know the y value. I go up here and I plug it in. 9 plus 15 plus 6 is 30. And then I plug it into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And there is the equation of your tangent line. Part C, find the equation of the normal line. I need the perpendicular slope. What's that going to be? Negative 1 over 11. Still the same point though, right? So it looks just like this, just that middle part changes. y minus 30 equals negative 1 over 11 times x minus 3. And now for probably one of the more missed questions on the take-home quiz, part B. Find any points. That means you have to list them as points. Okay. Where the tangent is horizontal. Horizontal is this. What do you know about horizontal? Slope is zero. It means m equals zero or f prime of x equals zero. Do you know f prime of x? Right there it is. You have it from part A. That's what I'm saying. If you don't if you didn't do it that way and you did the three and three plus h, then you gotta go through the x and x plus h down here. So if you have it from up here, you just go steal it. Where is 2x plus 5 equal to 0? It's where 2x is negative 5. It's where x is negative 5 halves. This gives you the x value of your point. But you still have to plug it in and find the y value. So I'm going to go up here and find what f of negative 5 halves is. This is to square it. Well, negative 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4. Then it says 5 times negative 5 halves, which is negative 25 halves, and plus 6. So you are going to have to get a common denominator. Common denominator here is 4. This one already has a 4. This one I have to multiply top and bottom by 2 in order to get it to be a 4 in the denominator. This one here is a 1. I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 4. So this is 49 minus 50, which is negative 1, 4. So the point is negative 5 halves, negative 1 fourth. If you like decimals instead, by all means, you could say negative 2.5 and negative 0.25. That's fine. But as far as squaring things, many of you don't necessarily know what negative two or negative two point five squared is. You know, you know what twenty five times twenty five is? No. About six twenty five. So then just put two decimal places. Six point two five. All right, so that is day one of your test. Now, there's something else that I need you to add to your sheet. In question six, which is for day two, I left off the interval for each problem here. So if you could just add those in, then you can finish that off by Wednesday, okay? You're going to struggle getting these ready. <laughs> Well, the thing is, is I thought everything was fine, you know, and so I had written it on a piece of paper, and then I typed it, and probably, like, the phone rang or something, and I, you know, looked away and thought, all right, well, that was typed in, I can go to the next one. And then the copy machine was the other thing, and usually I watch how many pages it pulls through, and I was probably talking and didn't pay attention, and, you know, I catch it many times. It happens all the time, but... You guys usually don't see it because I usually catch it at times. So. But yeah, I would say that was just wedding break. Okay. All right. Now for.